Hello YouTube, I am Joe. Today, let's talk air quality. Here's something I've added many moons ago. This is simply a rat cage blower that came out of an old furnace. I noticed when the guy was taking the old furnace up the stairs, after he installed the new one, that there was a new motor in the old unit that was going to the dump. At that time, I told him, hold on buddy, I gotta get a screw gun. All right, so this idea was born. Uh, this is just some really good filters that slide in from the bottom, go into this track so they're completely trapped, and you just turn this locker. So they go in really easy. Vacuum them off, you're done. You don't have to put in new filters all the time. Wash them every now and then. It works so well, it's unbelievable. This is throwing a little over 10,000 CFM, but here's the cool part, you guys. This whole shop has a circular motion, a spin, to the clean air. All dirty air is entering right here. Clean air is starting on the other side. And I'm going to show you how cool that system is. Let's have a look at that. Now, from the other view, showing on your right that air cleaner, I have a wall that divides the shop almost perfectly right down the middle for a pretty good portion of it. Does that have to be a perfectly good wall? No, it could just be anything that goes from the ceiling all the way to the floor. So that the motion in your shop has to be a circular, a circular motion that always gives you clean air, all of it. Not just some at one end of the shop gets cleaned where the clean air unit is. It all gets cleaned. And this is how I've made it work. So it's a circular thing. Let's have a different look. As another point of interest, obviously if you have the same scenario going here, oh, I see some of those need a little work. You'll need to close these off to get good filtration throughout your whole, your whole shop. You can't have air leaks, if you will, because then the bad air will go through there and come back to you. Okay, now here's the other side of the wall. Obviously this is the side the air comes out on. And I have it a diverter in here so that it shoots through this room and around the corner if you will. If I'm working the air compressor really hard like let's say uh, the media blaster is going to be going for quite some time that'll really warm this baby up and I mean warm it up so at which point I will open this deflector just to keep this a little cooler and then I make sure now that I'll shut it down because I've heard bad things about putting air on compressors uh, they don't boil off their own condensate then. So it comes up through this side highly pressurized and exit this way. Let's have a look how it all works. Okay so high pressure air is coming through this area if you will and I purposefully have it necked down if you will to increase the air speed so it follows around the corner and gets to the edge of my bench and starts to then curve inward. If I find that I'm doing a lot of routing, this area right here will be dead zone and it won't get cleaned properly at all. And there will be a little cloud floating around right here. So all I have to do is open up this all the way and now all of the air now moves this way instead of coming around through the bandsaw and around. So it's all about making it work like a, a water stream if you will. You know, like a, a, a fun thing in a park where you get on your little raft and go around the little lazy river. It's literally a lazy river of air. And it's constantly being cleaned, all of it. So after it comes through this door, it's then, first thing that's happening is it's cleaning the air for the bandsaw. Right? Because it's the bandsaw is very first. The next thing that happens, it's going to come around by the bench here. Really slowly it moves through. Now if I'm doing anything at the bench, it's, it's perfect because your air is purified from the one side. It comes around, keeps traveling around and around, slams into that door a little bit, but it's not a big deal. I can close that. And it keeps motioning around once again until you get to the worst part, a router. Now as you know, that's going to be a big mess. But because the air comes the way it does, you literally have fresh air coming in your face. So it works out very well. Then the air is literally 
headed past and down to be cleaned once again. So the circle keeps continuing is the idea. And the best part about all of that is all of the air is getting cleaned. Putting one of those air purifiers in a certain spot in the basement still doesn't get the whole racetrack of air working for you. Now, if you can do this, it'll really help you out. And if you can maybe snag a free heater motor, uh, that would be nice too out of somebody's old furnace, you know, maybe something that was headed to a landfill. They're not very expensive. I had to uh, buy a new motor for it. This has been running since the early 90s. It runs 12 hours a day. So eventually you will need a motor for it. And I think it was like $125 for a new motor. No big deal. So all you need is the rat cage itself and you're ready to go. Obviously the bigger shops are the ones we're really talking about here. Something really small. Maybe you won't be able to pull this off. But I'm telling you, it works really great, and I figured I would spur on some ideas. For those of you who want a better shot of this, I just spin this around, and if you have to open this up, here's how it works. So this is just a box. I put some gussets in it so that I could, after the hole was cut, I can fasten to a header that I had put in, and there's screws down in the bottom that go into another support piece that goes across the studs. So it's kind of like framing out a window. Same game. But it's just three filters that you have to vacuum. You know, as soon as you see that they're starting to load up a little bit, you just do it and you're ready to go. It's super fast to clean them. Take you about, oh, I'd say three minutes maybe. Two minutes to clean all three. Pretty fast gig. You guys let me know what you think. Take care.